over the river and through the woods <laughs> to happy days we go. Oh, we're always together. I wish we could start all over again and make that million dollars. I'm tired of everything rented. Like this car. I've been too much of a renter and not enough of an owner. About the only thing we own is Andy's toys and, and our clothes. Say, let's, you and Andy and me, go on a trip together. Andy's rather mad about Antarctica. That's not quite the kind of place I mean. <laughs> Paris, maybe, or, say, where are you going? I just thought we'd try the new freeway. Oh, yeah. Yuck. Good. Over the river runs. Oh, we're always together. Hey, it's the wrong ramp. Street Emergency Hospital. Do you know your name? My name is Peggy Merritt. My husband's name is Mike Merritt. Please, can you tell me, is he all right? Lie back. They gave you something to calm you last night. It hasn't worn off yet. Thank you. What happened? fortunate woman. You were thrown clear of the car, and except for that cut on your leg and several bad bruises, you seem to be in pretty good condition. We'll have to keep you here overnight for observation. Doctor? What about my husband? Dead, isn't he? It was instantaneous, Mrs. Merritt. I, I'm sorry. At least no one else was hurt. You ran into a truck. Mrs. Merritt, I'm Sergeant Aches. I'm a police officer. It's my duty to inform you that you're under arrest on a charge of negligent homicide. It's just a matter of routine. But in a case like this, it's a good idea to have a lawyer. Do you know one? Um, Mark Jordan, he's my husband's best friend. Andy, my little boy, I've got to talk to him. Hello? Peggy, are you all right? I'm fine. Y you didn't tell Andy, did you? No, no, of course not, dear. He's right here. Play. How are you enjoying your trip? Is it nice in the mountains? Is that Mommy? Can I talk to her? Andy wants to talk to you. Hello, dear. How are you, Andy? Why did you go to the mountains? Fishing? Is the fishing season again? Can I talk to Daddy? Daddy's not here right now, Andy. I just called to see if you were all right. I didn't go to school today. I'm coming down with a cold. Hello? Now, don't worry about a thing, dear. Just you take care of yourself. There were some detectives here. They were asking questions of all the neighbors. 
How do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. Before I set bail, I'd like to ask a few questions. Mrs. Merritt, you were given a blood test when you were taken to the hospital. I see it showed no trace of alcohol. I ordered a drink, but I only took a sip of it. Have you ever been arrested before? She has no previous record of any kind, Your Honor. Mm. Yes. Bail is set at $5,000. Thank you, Your Honor. Five. Mark, $5,000. I have a bail bondsman taking care of it. It could have been a lot higher. When you drove onto that ramp, you broke a law, and a man was killed. On the books, that's a serious offense. What happens to Andy if I go to jail? Charging you with negligent homicide is routine. It'll probably bring a suspended sentence and a strong warning to be more careful in the future. There's nothing to worry about. Guess I was just feeling sorry for myself. I don't blame you. But come on, I'll take you home. Where are you? Where's Andy? Well, please hurry, won't you? I, I want to see him. Mrs. Blanchard? Is he all right? You haven't told him anything, have you? Good. Mrs. Merritt, we're from the Special Investigator's Office. May we come in? The Special Investigator's Office? I thought that was taken care of this morning. Just want to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. It won't take more than a few minutes. All right. Thank you. Do you know Mrs. Grace Blanchard? Yes, she's my son's grandmother. Your son's grandmother? My husband was married before, and Mrs. Blanchard is his late wife's mother. Uh, she lives just around the corner. She'll be here any minute. How did his former wife die? In an airplane crash. What do you want? Did you write a note and give it to Mrs. Blanchard to pass on to your husband? Well, yes. I had an appointment with a hairdresser, and I couldn't wait for Mike, so I gave it to Mrs. Blanchard. She was here babysitting with Andy. Is, uh, this a note? Darling, I'll be ready at 7. Oblivion for us tonight. Yes. What does that mean? Mike always called getting drunk oblivion. It meant we were going out to get drunk. The alcoholic content of your blood was zero. Not a trace of alcohol. I know. I only took a sip of my drink. Was there some law against staying sober? Any particular reason why you were going out to get drunk? Mike had just gone through bankruptcy proceedings. We were both depressed. Your husband's seatbelt was fastened. Yours wasn't. But I often don't fasten my seatbelt. You were thrown out and landed on the inclined soft shoulder of the road, on uh, bushes and soft grass. I was thrown out, and that's where I landed. You're, uh, very athletic, aren't you? People who know you say you play a lot of tennis, go on fishing trips, that sort of thing. Well, I'm not an acrobat. Are you, uh, you saying I, I jumped out? Is that what you're saying? Mrs. Merritt, you must realize there's a suspicion you drove up the exit ramp of that freeway deliberately. Well, since you're now under arrest, bail has been posted. There's no need to rearrest you. But the district attorney's office may later decide there are grounds for a new charge. If the district attorney decides there are grounds for a new charge, what would that charge be? 
I'm sorry. The charge would be murder. Murder resulting from a suicide attempt. Goodbye. And thank you. Detectives I saw leaving. What did they want? Now, where's Andy? Peggy, dear, I've been thinking so much about Andy and what this might do to him. First losing his mother and then his father so soon after. He's a sensitive. I'm his mother. Now, where is he? You know you're not. You're his stepmother. And he has no real kin now but me. And my lawyer assured me this morning that... You're what? You've been discussing my son with a lawyer? I wish you wouldn't keep referring to him as your son, Peggy. It's not realistic. Andy is with a friend of mine. What friend? That's none of your affair. None of my affair? Now, you listen to me. My lawyer told me to expect this from you. He said it was best for the boy to be kept out of your sight until this is all settled. You can't do this to me. You're kidnapping my son. Well, one can't kidnap one's own flesh and blood, one's own grandson. You're not even related to him. For as much as it hath pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased brother, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ. In every sense that matters, Your Honor, Mrs. Merritt is the boy's mother. Frankly, I don't understand how there can be any question. How will you support this child, Mrs. Merritt? Did your husband leave any insurance? Yes, as a matter of fact, he left a, a rather large amount. The policy is for $100,000, Your Honor, with the usual double indemnity clause, which, upon it, will bring the amount to $200,000. The insurance claim is being held up because a charge of murder against Mrs. Merritt is a serious possibility. Your Honor. I might add, Your Honor, that Mrs. Blanchard's financial ability to support the child is every bit as good as Mrs. Merritt's. The child is the beneficiary of the insurance policy, not Mrs. Merritt. Mrs. Merritt, I'm giving temporary custody of the boy to his grandmother. I want to emphasize that this is temporary. It can be altered at a formal hearing for permanent custody. Your Honor, may I see my son? Mrs. Blanchard, we will make arrangements for you to take the boy to a public park or playground within the next day or so. There will be a court-appointed chaperone who will remain nearby to see that Mrs. Merritt has an uninterrupted hour with her son. Is this clear to everyone? This hearing is adjourned. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Come on, Peggy, I'll take you home. It's only temporary. I've just got to prove I'm innocent. I've got to get Andy back again. I know. I tell them the truth, and I can see their minds going to work on it. I don't know, twisting and testing it for lies. Mark, couldn't I take a lie detector test? Those tests have no legal validity. Look, I may lose Andy, not because I committed a crime, but because I can't prove I didn't. Now, I can't believe that the judge would refuse to look at a lie detector test or anything that would help her decide. 
She'd have to refuse. But maybe we could get the results of a test to her unofficially. And it might influence her. It might even influence the DA. Now, Mrs. Merritt, I've already read you all the questions I'm going to ask. There won't be any trick questions you haven't already heard. Do you understand? Yes. Let me put your feet flat on the floor and look at the wall. Now, just relax. Relax, Mrs. Merritt. Just answer yes or no to all the questions. Is your name Peggy Merritt? Yes. You live at 1326 Rigo Place in this city? Yes. On the night of September 29th of this year, did you drive onto the exit ramp of the freeway? Yes. Did you know it was an exit ramp? No. Do you smoke? Yes. Was the car wrecked that night an accident? Yes. Have you at any time actually tried to kill yourself? No. Do you like to go to the movies? <clears throat> yes. Have you lied to me about anything in order to beat this test? No. How am I doing? I'm just fine. Don't want to take much longer? I have to meet my son at 3 o'clock. No, we'll be through shortly. Have you had training in psychology? Some, yes. Why do you ask? How do I tell my son his father's dead? Mommy! Oh! You must have caught a million fish. Did you bring any back? I'm afraid I couldn't, darling. How are you? I still haven't come down with a cold. That's good. How long do I have to wait? I mean, I'm almost beginning to miss school. Well, maybe you can go back tomorrow. Come on, let's take a little walk, hmm? Where's Mrs. Merritt? Over there. The district attorney wants her right away. She's supposed to have a full hour with her stepson, court order. She has till 4 o'clock. Will I see him again? Let's go get some ice cream. I wish we can postpone this meeting until your attorney can be present. No, that's all right. What is it? Who advised you to take the polygraph test? It was my own idea. Why? Because too many people thought I was lying. And it now appears that you were. Haven't you read the results of that test? Yes, I have. What do you think you could do? Beat the polygraph? A lot of people think they can beat it, but they get fooled every time, just as you did. You mean that machine said I was lying? That I really did try to kill myself? It said exactly that. Now, Mrs. Merritt, why don't you just begin at the beginning? Tell the truth. Miss Fisher, come in, please, and bring your notebook. Mrs. Merritt will make a statement. John, I want a car assigned to follow Mrs. Merritt and warn them she may be a potential suicide. Well, I'm calling the chief to ask him to let me drop an indictment against her. Now, that's right, murder. And that's why he called you into his office. He knows he can't use the results of that test as evidence. 
He's trying to trap you. How could that machine say I was lying? Unless it didn't. Unless he was lying to me. No, he wouldn't try that. He's not stupid. The lie detector test has made him feel sure he has a case against you. If he can break you down. He can't go into court with nothing but the results of that test, and he knows it. He must prove intent. Do they give that polygraph test anywhere else besides the police department? Sure, why? I want to take another one. What? If that district attorney wasn't lying, and if that machine did say I am guilty, then maybe I am, Mark. I just don't know anymore. Peggy, you're not being reasonable. You know you're not guilty. I know you're not guilty. That machine was strapped to me. It was reacting to my heartbeat, to my pulse. It was spelling out what was going on inside me. That's why I want to take another test. If that machine was telling the truth, then maybe there is something. Maybe I've been lying to myself. Peggy, stop it. The lie detector is not God. It was put together by a man with a screwdriver and a pile of nuts and bolts. It cannot see inside your soul. Your name is Peggy Merritt? Yes. Your height is five feet, seven inches? Yes. Your father's first name was Philip? Yes. Your stepson is six years old? Yes. She seems to be looking right at me. She isn't. She's watching herself in the mirror. Yes. Have you at any time in your life tried to kill yourself? No. There, you're seeing a total deviation from the norm. The stylus in the center is the main indicator. Well, I'm no expert in these things. Does that mean no you comment at the moment? Do you have a driver's license? Yes. Obviously, that question had a weighted factor. She's still reacting to the previous question. Did you usually fasten the seat belt when you drove? No. Did you murder your husband? No. Now it's pretty clear why the district attorney is so sure of his position. Your height is Couldn't she be simply feeling guilty inches. because she accidentally... Yes. because she was driving? That question was carefully keyed to the word murder. She volunteered for this test. She's paying for it herself. Why would it she... It wouldn't be the first time somebody tried to beat the machine. She's Once not trying to beat the machine. She's only trying to prove she's been telling the yes. truth. Do you smoke? Yes. That reaction says she's lying. I know for a fact she does smoke. When we evaluate the results, you can be sure we'll know what we're doing. Six years old. Yes. Does $200,000 seem to be a lot of money to you? Yes. Peggy, neither of those tests has any legal validity. Remember that. Mark, do you remember when we first met how you said I was quite a woman for rearing another woman's child? Yes, I remember. I wasn't quite a woman. I was desperate. I was 27 years old and scared. I've lost Mike. I've lost Andy now, too. I'll never get him back again, will I? Come on, Peggy. I'll take you out for dinner. We'll talk about it then. No, Mark, not tonight. I've got to be alone tonight. This is Special Car 14. Special 14, go ahead. Subject still in the park, hasn't moved. Acknowledged. I knew what we were watching her for. I think that the captain thinks that she might make another suicide attempt. You know, she doesn't look like a suicide type to me.
Suppose she just wanted to kill her husband. She gets him all strapped in, heads up the exit ramp of the freeway. She doesn't fasten her belt. She opens the door, jumps out. A perfect murder. Yeah, I think maybe that's occurred to the DA, too. from the coin booth. Can you check that line? Yes. I'll wait. Car 14. 14. Cut into the line. She called the district attorney. Peggy Merritt. You understand that everything you say may be used in evidence against you. I understand that what I say may be used in evidence against me. And I voluntarily make this statement. I did plan to kill myself and my husband. I deliberately drove up the road. Mrs. Pike. Did you witness the accident on September 29th in which Michael Merritt was killed? That's right. Describe what you saw. Well, I was in the car behind the truck they ran into, and I seen it. They? Well, her and the man she... that was killed. You've seen the defendant before? That's right. On September 29th? That's right. What did you see Mrs. Merritt do? I seen her jump out of the car she was in. She jumped? That's right. Objection. Conclusion on the part of the witness. Sustained. Mrs. Pike, at what point did she leave the car? Before or after it hit the truck? Just before. So on impact, she was already out of the car? That's right. Thank you, Mrs. Pike. Your witness. Mrs. Pike. That's right. You say Mrs. Merritt got out of the car before impact. How long before? Just before. A second before? Well, I wouldn't know about that. You wouldn't know about that. But you're testifying that you do know. Was it 20 seconds before? No, just before. In other words, a second or two before. That's right. Were you driving a car? No, my husband, he was driving. Did your husband collide with the truck ahead of him? No, but he come mighty close. He skidded? That's right. Did you remain sitting there calmly after your husband hit his brakes? No, I was thrown forward, but I didn't close my eyes. But you were thrown forward. That's right. How do you know Mrs. Merritt wasn't thrown forward, too, when she hit her brakes? Because I seen her jump out of her car. Have you ever seen anyone thrown from a moving car? No. Ever see anyone jump from a moving car? No. But she wasn't thrown. She jumped off to the side into the bushes. Your Honor, I move to strike everything after the word no is non-responsive to the question. It will be stricken from the record. The jury's admonished to disregard the stricken portion of the answer. Mrs. Pike, what kind of car was Mrs. Merritt in? Well, it was the kind that... Well, I don't know the names. What color was it? Creamy colored. Is it your testimony that Mrs. Merritt jumped through the window of a moving car? Listen, she didn't jump through the window. She opened the door on her side just before they hit the truck, and she jumped out. Your Honor, I move to strike the entire answer as non-responsive. Your Honor, Mr. Jordan has asked an argumentative question, and he got an answer. And both the answer and the question will be stricken. Thank you, Your Honor. No further question. You may step down, Mrs. Pike. The prosecution rests its case, Your Honor. Is the defense ready? Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls as its first witness, Mrs. Peggy Merritt. Mrs. Peggy Merritt, please. Raise your right hand, please. 
Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, in the matter now pending before this court? I do. State your name, please. Peggy Merritt. You may be seated. You are Mrs. Peggy Merritt, the defendant in this trial? Yes. Did you know what you were doing when you drove onto the wrong ramp of the new freeway on September 29? Yes. You did it deliberately? Yes. Did you see the sign indicating that you'd entered an exit ramp? I th yes. What did it say? What did the sign say? Exit only? Do not enter? What? It was a new freeway. I hadn't been on it before. If you'd never been on the freeway before and you didn't see the sign. I did see the sign. If you saw it, why can't you remember what it said? Did it say exit ramp? Yes. Did it? Isn't it a fact that what the sign said was do not enter? Objection, Your Honor. He's impeaching his own witness. That would appear to be the case, Mr. Jordan. She signed a confession saying that she premeditatedly drove onto the wrong ramp of a new freeway. And she can't tell us what kind of a sign told her it was the wrong ramp. I'm attacking the confession, not impeaching the witness. Well, if the accused is repudiating her confession, please say so now and establish a foundation. She's not repudiating the confession, Your Honor, though I tried to persuade her to do so. And I beg the court's indulgence in allowing me latitude in the conduct of her defense. Your Honor, he's either impeaching his own witness or he's not. I will overrule Mr. West's objection, but I direct you to proceed with caution, Mr. Jordan. Thank you, Your Honor. Mrs. Merritt, you're charged with murder, the most serious crime. Do you expect me to get you acquitted? No. No, I don't. You want to be punished? I did something criminal. It's only human and natural to want to do penance for doing something wrong. It's necessary. At least for me, so I'll be able to go on living again. You felt compelled by conscience to confess? Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Merritt. That's all for now. With the court's permission, I reserve the right to recall the defendant later. Granted. Any questions, Mr. West? May I reserve the right to cross-examine? Very well. You may step down, Mrs. Merritt. I call Dr. Harold Davis. Uh, Dr. Harold Davis to the stand, please. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the matter now pending before this court? I do. State your name, please. Dr. Harold Davis. You may be seated. State your name and occupation, please. Dr. Harold Davis. I own my own firm, the Davis Investigating Agency. What's the primary nature of your business, doctor? My firm administers polygraph tests to private individuals, businesses, or anyone who has need of such services. Polygraph tests, better known as lie detector tests? That is correct. On October 9, did you administer a polygraph test to the defendant? I did. What were your findings? Objection. Sustained. Such findings are not admissible, you know that. I ask the court to admit the findings as relevant to subsequent events, not as evidence of the truth or falsity of any statements made by the witness. Mrs. Merritt was given a polygraph test by our own police experts. I would insist upon putting in evidence the results of that test if Dr. Davis is allowed to testify. I'll stipulate that the prosecution may introduce the results of the earlier test. You will? So stipulated. There is precedent for admitting lie detector results, provided both prosecution and defense agree. I believe it was... Uh... The People Against Monroe, 85. Appellate reports of this state, page 891. Well, that's right, Mr. Jordan. Were the tests taken by the defendant voluntary, no compulsion? None whatsoever, Your Honor. Dr. Davis. Uh, Mrs. Merritt uh, came to me with her attorney, and she paid for the test herself. You may proceed, Mr. Jordan. Dr. Davis, you were asked, what were your findings on the test you gave Mrs. Merritt? I found that she was lying in response to many of the questions asked her. 
One of the questions asked her was, do you smoke? What did she say? Her answer was yes. What did the polygraph show? Well, it showed that she was apparently lying, but uh, that happens quite often on so-called innocuous questions. In other words, you knew that she does, in fact, smoke and was telling the truth. Yes, I was trying to explain. Another question you asked was, do you drive a car? What was her answer? I think uh, her answer was yes. Her answer was yes, doctor. And again, the machine said she was lying. I was trying to... Then she was asked if her husband was 41, and she said yes. Again, the machine said she was lying. How do you account for these discrepancies, doctor? The truthful answers she gave, which elicited uh, responses that indicated she was lying, can be accounted for by emotional factors. Emotional factors? The subject can have certain deep-seated guilt feelings about something, like smoking. This can cause responses that would indicate she is lying, even though she is telling the truth. We take this into consideration when we're evaluating the results. Doctor, is the polygraph machine infallible, or can it make mistakes? If mistakes are made, they're made by the man, not the machine. The machine is not subject to error. It accurately records reactions that are occurring. But the reactions may be interpreted incorrectly. A bad nurse may misread a thermometer. I believe the question can be answered with a simple yes or no. Which would be correct? I suppose yes. No further questions. Mr. West, do you wish to cross-examine? Dr. Davis. Did your assistant ask the defendant if she tried to commit suicide and murder? Yes. How many variations or repetitions of that question were put to her? Eleven or twelve. You mentioned emotional factors. Do you often run into excessive emotional factors in giving these tests? Fairly often. In such cases, we consider the tests invalid and uh, draw no conclusions. In Mrs. Merritt's case, do you feel excessive emotional factors invalidated the test? No, the majority of her answers follow the normal pattern we insist upon for validity. You asked her 11 or 12 times if she had tried to kill herself and her husband. How did she respond? She answered no, except on two occasions when she was instructed to answer yes. How did the polygraph respond when she denied attempting murder and suicide? It indicated very strongly that she was lying. On the two occasions when you instructed her to say yes, she had deliberately attempted to kill herself and her husband, what did the polygraph indicate? That she was telling the truth. I recall Mrs. Merritt to the stand. Mrs. Peggy Merritt, please. You are still under oath, Mrs. Merritt. Just sit down. Mrs. Merritt, who told you about the results of the first polygraph test? Mr. West. Well, what did he say? He said that the test showed I had deliberately tried to commit suicide and... Objection. I object to the witness giving hearsay testimony as to what I said. Sustained. Why did you take the second test? Because I was beginning to believe that I... that I'm guilty. What did Dr. Davis tell you after the second test? He said the test indicated strongly that I had deliberately tried to... Objection. Hearsay. Sustained. Mrs. Merritt, how old was your husband? Forty-one. When you gave that answer, Dr. Davis' machine said you were lying. Objection. The question calls for an expert answer. Sustained. I direct both of you gentlemen to refrain from interpreting the polygraph evidence admitted into this case. Another question you were asked was, do you smoke? You answered yes. Isn't that so? Yes. The machine indicated an emotional response. The same kind of response it indicated when you denied trying to kill yourself. Do you smoke? Yes. Did you try to kill yourself? Answer the question, Mrs. Merritt. I believe I did. Did you or did you not ever try to kill yourself? She answered that. It's correct, Mr. Jordan. After Dr. Davis gave you the polygraph test, what did you do? I took a long walk to think. Then what did you do? I, 
I called Mr. West. I went to his office and I signed a confession. In other words, during the walk, you came to believe that confession was the best course. Yes. Mrs. Merritt, did your husband love you? Yes. You heard Mrs. Blanchard testify here that he preferred his first wife? Was she lying? No, no, Mrs. Blanchard was not lying, but he did love me, too. But preferred his first wife? Yes, he did. Why? I don't know. Wasn't it because you didn't love him? Oh, no, I loved him. Oh, you loved him? Yes. Yeah. Objection. Don't badger your own witness, Counselor. She answered the question. Yes, Your Honor, she did. I asked if she loved her husband, and she answered yes. In Dr. Davis' test, she was asked the same question three times. And three times she answered yes to the question, did you love your husband? And three times the polygraph machine reacted in a way which Dr. Davis described as an absolute indication she was lying. Mrs. Merritt, you're under oath. Do you honestly believe you loved your husband? Can't you answer the question, Mrs. Merritt? I don't know. Oh, you don't know if you loved him. You now have some doubts, don't you? Yes. You never acknowledged these doubts even to yourself before this moment, did you? No. Did you once tell me that you believed the polygraph machine because it spelled out what was going on inside you? Yes. Have you ever asked Dr. Davis why, when you were asked questions about driving and smoking and your husband's age, why the machine indicated you were lying when you were, in fact, telling the truth? Objection. I'm merely quoting Dr. Davis, Your Honor. He said, quote, the machine indicated you were lying, end quote. And he also went on to explain the why and the how. Objection sustained. Proceed. Was your husband 41? Yes. The machine says that's a lie. Objection. Sustained. The machines, according to both Mr. West and Dr. Davis, said you were lying when you denied deliberately killing your husband. Were you lying? I withdraw the question. Mrs. Merritt, if you actually did not love your husband when you took those lie detector tests, wouldn't that constitute an enormous emotional factor? Objection. The witness is no expert on polygraph machines. The defendant's belief in these machines is the very heart of this whole case. Well, granted that Mrs. Merritt is not an expert, Mr. West, her attitudes and beliefs do seem relevant. Objection overruled. Mrs. Merritt, I want you to answer this yes or no. Did you love your husband? Objection. She already answered that. Sustain. When you took the lie detector tests, were you aware that you did not love your husband? No. You became aware of it later? Yes. In the last few minutes? Yes. It isn't a very pretty thought, is it? No. Oh. But there it was, and you were living with it, had lived with it for years, when you took both lie detector tests. Wouldn't you call such self-deception about your husband an emotional factor? Objection. Sustained. This woman's freedom is at stake because she confessed to a crime because two machines told her she committed it. You can make that point in your summation. Proceed now with the questioning. Did you hear Dr. Davis say the machines several times indicated you were lying when you were, in fact, telling the truth? Yes. Did he say this was accounted for by emotional factors? Yes. Do you smoke? Yes. The machine says that's a lie. Do you feel any emotion about smoking? No. Your husband was 41. Do you feel emotional about his age? No. Did he object to your smoking? He wanted me to stop. Was he 41? Yes. According to Dr. Davis, there's an emotional factor there somewhere. Do you know what it is? No. Isn't it true you felt so guilty about your husband because you did not love him that any question remotely connected with him got an emotional response? Objection. The witness is not competent to evaluate her own polygraph test. Overruled. Answer the question, Mrs. Merritt. Answer the question. I don't know. You don't know. Do you know whether you actually intended to kill yourself and your husband on the night of the accident? Answer the question, Mrs. Merritt. I don't know. Your husband's death was an accident and nothing more. Isn't that true? 
I don't know. 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 She's just repudiated her confession, Your Honor. The defense rests. <laughs> At this time, I move that the charges against Mrs. Merritt be dismissed. A bailiff, have Mrs. Merritt return to her cell. Jordan and Mr. West, you come with me. This court is adjourned until 2 p.m. At that time, Mr. Jordan and I will rule on your motion. West, I believe you have a motion to put before us. I have, Your Honor. The district attorney's office has concluded that although no fault can be found with any party concerned, Mrs. Merritt's confession was obtained under a unique and unnatural kind of duress. I hereby move that the charges against Mrs. Merritt be dismissed by reason of insufficient evidence. However, nothing here shall prejudice the right of any other department of this state to prosecute Mrs. Merritt for criminal negligence or question her privilege to drive an automobile in this state. Your motion is granted. Thank you, Mr. West. The defendant's bail is exonerated and she is released. The jury is dismissed with my thanks. Mrs. Merritt, you're free to go. This court is adjourned. I'm sorry I had to be so rough on you, Peggy, but I'd do it again. So would I. What? You've done more than just give me a rough time, Mark. You made me take a hard look at myself. The last three hours I've spent at it. Long, long look at me. I don't like what I saw. I was quite a fighter once. Optimistic, full of fire. And one day I got scared, lonely and scared. The way millions of women do, I guess. I settled for what I thought I had to take. I married a man I didn't love, didn't respect. I compromised with everything. I'll never compromise again. Mrs. Blanchard? Oh, dear, I was going to call you later. I'm so pleased. Mrs. Blanchard, I want Andy back. Now, Peggy, we must abide by I'm the judge's... I'm going to get him back, Mrs. Blanchard. I'll see you in court. You get Andy back. When you do, keep him. Even if some machine somewhere does say you're the wrong mother. <laughs> 